Hi, hi to everybody. In this lecture video, we are going to be doing electromagnetic waves. And the specific goal is after doing this uh, chapter, you will understand the behavior of electromagnetic waves in uh, various media at, uh, as well as the interface. And then you will also be able to show that both E and D satisfies the wave equation and travels at the speed of light. And you will also understand the behavior of electromagnetic waves in the uh, linear isotropic homogeneous material and you will also be able to derive Fresnel's equations and you will also know the previous state angle and you will also be able to understand the waveguides particularly the hollow uh, waveguides and you will also be able to solve or you will be in a position to solve the problems on the above. Now let us just start with the electromagnetic waves or, and, and and in particular one has to talk about the Maxwell's equation and the Maxwell's equations are given by this equation. This is what we know. This is what we know. This is a Gauss law. This is the Gauss law in magnetism, the Faraday's law uh, and P.S. Maxwell's equation. But now let us consider the case of a vacuum. In case of vacuum this equation becomes zero. Why that is the case? Because in vacuum, in vacuum in vacuum is an empty space rho is just equal to zero and the, the current density is just zero there's nothing such as the charge density and there's nothing such as the the current density in a free free space or in vacuum so as a result this equation becomes this this one vanishes and then you end up with this equation and these two stays stays the same right now i will also like to say something about the faraday's law uh, the faraday's law what does this tells us it tells us the e induces b and b induces e you cannot have one without the other so that's that's very very important now let us just apply the curl when we take the curl of this equation and then the curl of this equation so that we can see what will happen now let us just start with this one let us take the curl of, of of e now if we take the curl of e this is what we are going to have now the curl of e in both sides this is what you are going to have now from there the curl of a curl is just given as the gradient of the divergence minus the laplacian i think you still remember this from your 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 your, your previous uh, vector class or mass class so this is what you are going to have now this is distributed i can write it in terms of this and i know what is the curl of the curl of b the curl of b the curl of b is just given by by this the curl of b would just be given by this whenever i see this i will write this whenever i see this i will write that right in that case this is what i'm going to have the the gradient of divergence is just zero this is what we know i don't want you to prove this but we can prove it if 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 we have to so it's just zero and now minus the laplacian now in that case whenever i see that i'm going to write this so this is what i'm going to write now this ends up with the laplacian the second order uh, differential equation of this this nature now similarly this is what we are going to have for the curl of b now maybe i might just do it very quickly for the curl of b the curl of b let me just do it for you for the curl of b the curl of b the curl of b is just given as mu naught epsilon naught d e d t so that's the vector right now if i take the curl if i take the curl i'm just going to have a curl there if i take the curl of that and then here if i take the curl here if i take the curl all right sorry let me just do this I will just write it from scratch. Now, if I take the curl, if I take the curl there, the curl of a curl, that will be the gradient of a divergence of B minus the Laplacian, the Laplacian of of that B is equals to mu naught, epsilon naught, and then D, DT, and then I want to write my curl here of E. And I know what is the curl of E. That term here is just zero. We can prove it if you want. Now this equation is just going to be the Laplacian, the Laplacian, and then minus there is equals to mu naught, epsilon naught. What is the curl of E? The curl of E, Faraday's law. What is the curl of E? The Faraday's law. Is minus db dt 
So now this minus signs, this minus signs becomes positive. Becomes positive. Now as a result, so this is just going to be the Laplacian of B is equal to mu naught epsilon. And then the second order dt. So that's that's basically what you are going to have, right? So which is exactly similar to, to this equation that you are seeing there. But now let us just compare this with the known because this is known. It is actually looking like the, the wave equation. Let us compare this with the wave equation. The wave equation is given by this equation. This is what you know from your previous classes. Now we can actually see that we can compare the speed of light, the, that speed or the speed of that wave with, with, with 1 over v squared. It must be equal to mu naught epsilon naught. So if you rearrange that equation, what are you going to have? You want to write v is equal to 1 over mu naught epsilon naught. So now if we put the v, we want to get the v. The square root of 1 is 1 and then the square root of mu naught epsilon naught. And this is nothing else but it's just equal to C, the speed of light, which is roughly equal to 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. So that's that's what you are you are going to have for, for that. So that is the speed of light. So now from there, therefore, light is an electromagnetic wave occupying part of electromagnetic spectrum. So for an example, let us just consider a serial wave plane wave in a vacuum propagating in the K direction in the K direction. This wave is propagating in the K direction or in the Z roof. So now it's got the electric field. Say for example, the red shaded part is the electric field. Is electric field. Say in this case it's oscillating in X. It's got the amplitude in X. And the blue region in this case it is actually having the, the Y. Therefore, this R here, there will be the Y, and then the, 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 that R will be X. And I also want to remind you what is this uh, vector R. The vector R is nothing else, but the vector R is just the is just equals to the X in, in X roof plus Y in Y roof plus Z in Z, Z roof. And in some other books, this is just nothing else, but this is just I plus Y in G plus z in, in 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 k so this these notations are just the same so i might be using one of 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 this because they they are just the same so that's why i'm saying in this case in this in this particular case of the of the wave i'm particularly saying the electric field is in x and then the the, the blue part is the magnetic field is in Y and then they are all traveling in the Z direction. And I must also remind you from the previous class that the electric field is perpendicular to the magnetic field and is also perpendicular to the direction of motion. So this is what we are seeing from that diagram. And this is what I'm going to prove for you also today. I'm going to prove this for you today. So that's that's what I also wanted you, you, you to see. So now suppose that you are for argument's sake, you are standing somewhere in Z direction and then you are looking at that particular individual wave with E and B because Faraday's law, E induces B and B induces E. So now if you are standing there in Z direction, what are you going to see as, as, as the electric field? Electric field is going to be going up and down. Maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum. But the B field, the blue region will just be going like this. Maximum, minima, maximum, minima. So that's what I, I, I wanted you, you, you to know. But this, of course, this must be a solution to the wave equation and must also satisfy the, the Maxwell's equation. But now, before we determine this, remember the following. I want you to remember the following. Why I want you to remember the following is the fact that we have the del operator in Maxwell's equation. We have the del operator in Maxwell's equation. And this del is actually a vector given by this equation. Now that del operator, when it acts in a scalar function phi, is gives us this. Now the del can be dotted with a certain vector and that is what we call the divergence. And the divergence is just given by, by this. And the del can be crossed with a certain vector a and that is what we call a curl. And the curl is just given by, by this equation. And what is also very important is the following that, please, Note that if this operator acts on that function, acts on that function, 
we are just going to have the del when the del x on that function when the del x on that function the del gives us the del gives us ik ik vector ik vector why because we are going to come here and then we differentiate with respect to 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 to, to r that position vector and this one is just going to be a constant therefore we are just going to have that and then this operator dt this operator dt d dt is just give us minus i omega so we are just going to have that because now why that is the case because if we come to electric field or the magnetic field we differentiate with respect to time we are just going to have i omega the same thing right so that's what i wanted you to see so as a result from the maxwell's equation whenever i see del i'm going to write this whenever i see del i'm going to write this whenever i see this i'm going to write this i hope this is just going to be a very simple way of of dealing with this uh, uh operator right so this is what you are going to have now from the maxwell's equation from the maxwell equation the first maxwell equation is the divergence of e in vacuum of course the divergence of e is just given by this but whenever I see that, I'm going to write ik dot e is just giving us zero. Now, what, why did, did this is just giving us zero? Because I'm just whenever I see that, I'm uh, I'm writing this, and then it's just equal to zero. That shows that the electric field E must be perpendicular to its propagation motion. It must be perpendicular to the direction of, of, of motion and the wave is a transverse. Now, let us just uh, also remind you of the fact that, say, you have two vectors A dot B. If you have two vectors A dot B, it's just given by A, the magnitude of A and then the magnitude of B and then the cosine of an angle between them. Now, let me just throw you a cosine graph. A cosine graph is something thrown in this fashion, where here is 2 pi, and then there I have pi. There I have pi halves, or 90. Here I have 3 pi halves. Now, in this case, for me to have A dot B is equal to 0, it's just like having K vector dot e vector is equal to zero which means in that case this is just equals to the magnitude of k and the magnitude of the electric field e and then the cosine of an angle between them but for this to be for this to be equal to zero for this to be equal to zero therefore the theta that theta that theta that theta here theta must be equals to pi halves or 90 degrees right so as a result this shows that the electric field is perpendicular to the direction of 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 motion as 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 we have we have seen from that uh, diagram now the same thing applies for the for the for the magnetic field b the same thing applies for the magnetic field b the dot product of two vectors to be equal to zero therefore that the angle between them must just be equals to equals to zero Yes, so that's 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 what is, is is important. Now let us also talk about the curl of 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 e. Whenever I see that, I'm going to write i k, and then whenever I see this operator d over d t, I'm going to write this. So this is what you are going to have, and as a result, this is just going to be positive. Now this is just going to be given by that equation. That is the 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 i k. That is i i k cross e is equals to i omega omega b therefore those i's will just cancel each other and when they cancel each other what are you going to have what are you going to have i'm just going to have b is equals to k vector k vector cross cross e uh, cross 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 e divided by by omega and what I also want to remind you is the fact that the definition of a unit vector is nothing else but is just the k vector divided by the magnitude of that k vector. Now, as a result, the k vector, it can be written as the unit vector times the magnitude of k. Right. In that case, I'm just going to have this here. Whenever I see k, uh, k vector, I'm going to write the unit vector times the magnitude of k cross, cross of e divided by omega. So that is nothing else but 
I know that C is equal to omega over K. Therefore, 1 over C is nothing else but it's just K over omega. So as a result, this equation here is just given by, is just given by unit vector K cross cross E divided by, by C, which is nothing else but that, 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 that equation here. And what I also want to remind you is the fact that when you have the dot, the, the cross product of two vectors, for an example, the cross, the cross product of two vectors is always a vector. Is always a vector, but the dot product of two vectors, say for an example, a dot b, the a dot b, this is always a scalar, while the cross product of two vectors is always a vector. So that's what I wanted you, you to, to see, right? Now let us also talk about the last uh, Maxwell equation, which is uh, K of B is just given by, by this in, in, in vacuum. Now in that case, whenever I see that, I'm going to write IK, and then this is what I'm going to have, right? So now if you rearrange this equation, this is what you are going to have. Now this equation, the condition four is exactly the same as uh, condition, condition, condition three meaning E and B are perpendicular to one another, and the E magnitude is larger by a factor of C compared to the magnitude of, of B. So that's, that's, that's the results. And then I think I've proven for you that the electric field is perpendicular to, to the magnetic field, and then they are all perpendicular to the propagation, uh, to the direction of, of motion. So as, as we have seen that, that, that uh, wave, with the gram, the red shaded and the, the blue shaded. Right. Now, the energy density is just given in terms of U, in terms of the electric field contribution as well as the contribution from the magnetic field B. But now the contribution from the magnetic component is just given by that. And now we know what is the magnetic field B from this uh, Maxwell's equation. And now if you write that in terms of that, you can show that the contribution from the magnetic field is exactly the same as the contribution from the electric field. Now, if you add these two, if you add that plus this, because this is equal to that, therefore you are going to show, you can be able to show that the energy density is just given by epsilon naught e, e squared. Right. Now, the energy flux density, what is the energy flux density? The energy flux density is the energy per unit area per unit time which is just given by this equation here, and that is what we call the, the pointing vector. Now, the pointing vector is just given by, by this, E cross B. Now, E cross B, let me just also remind you that if I have the cross product of two vectors, say a vector A, say this is a vector A, and then I also have a vector B here. This is my vector B. Now, when I say A cross B, when I say A cross B, a cross B, say it's a certain vector C, say it's a certain vector C, say this is a certain vector C, is equal to a certain vector C. Now, if this is an angle, if this is an angle theta, therefore A cross B, A cross B will just be a shortest distance from A to B. That will be that vector going into the, into the board. That is just going to be that vector going into the board. So B will just, uh, C is just going to be that vector that is going to go to the, to the board but the moment i say a say b cross a b cross a if it is c if it's c it is just going to be minus vector c because it's b cross c it, it is just going to be that vector that is going to be coming out of the board that is just going to be that vector that is going to be coming coming out of the board right that's what i wanted you to see and what I'm trying to say is, you see the pointing vector or the energy flux density is this given by E cross B, E cross B. Now in that case, the, this is a vector, the pointing, ve the, 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 the pointing vector is a vector, is an energy flux density, it's a vector. So in that case, say for an example, the electric field is in, say it's in, say electric field is in, say the electric field is in, I want to say electric field is in, in, in I. Say the electric field is in I, and then the magnetic field is in, 
in G, what will be the direction of the pointing vector? The pointing vector will be in K. Why? Because I, if I have I here and then J and then K there, I just want to remind you the basics. Now, if I cross J is in K, but if I have, but if I have the electric field in J and the magnetic field in, in I, it will mean J cross I is in minus K. Therefore, this pointing vector will be in, in, minus, in minus K. But I cross J, it will be in, in, in K. This is very important. I, I also want you to, to always remember that. That is always a vector. Now, in that case, when I take the E cross B, because I know what is B, B is just given from the previous uh, slides. We have just derived that from the Maxwell equation, condition three and four. This is given by that. And now this is just given by this E dot E and then E dot K. E dot E is nothing else but it's E squared. But now E dot K. Now remember, what is K? K is the direction of the propagation. Now if you have E, E is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Now, as I've said to you that if I have two vectors, two vectors, if I have two vectors, the dot product of two vectors, E dot K, is nothing else but it's the magnitude of the electric field and the magnitude of k and the cosine of an angle between them but now what is e and k they are perpendicular to each other therefore there is 90 degree there now if we have the cosine of 90 the cosine of 90 this is the last time i'm throwing the the, the, the graph of a cosine this is the cosine of 90 which is nothing else but it's just zero so as a result that is just going to give us to give us zero it is just going to give us zero. That term is just going to give, give us zero as a result. The pointing or the pointing vector or the energy flux density is just given by this equation there. Right. In terms of the energy density, S in terms of U is just given by this. And it is always a vector. That's why you have a unit vector in K. That means that the energy flux density is actually in the direction of, of, the, of the wave propagation. It's in the direction of the wave propagation. Now, let us also talk about the... The fact that the electromagnetic fields not only carries the energy, they also carries the momentum. The momentum density G vector is just given by this. Now, in terms of uh, the pointing vector is just given by this. But we know also that the speed of light, the C, the C is just given by, 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 by 1 over the square root of mu naught epsilon naught. So now that's what, and now c squared is nothing else but is 1 over mu naught epsilon naught. Right, so that's what you are going to have. Now that can be written in terms of the speed of, of, of light, in terms of, 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 of this equation here, the momentum. Right, and also when we look at this, we can also see that the momentum is in the direction of the propagation. Yes, I mean the momentum must always be in the direction of the, of the, of the velocity. Of the direction of, of the motion of the of the wave. Now, for the electromagnetic plane waves, this is what we are going to have for the for the for the for the um, uh, for the momentum. Yes, this is what we are going to have for the for the momentum. When the electric field has a sinusoidal dependency, is just given by this equation, then the time average is the square value of this. The time average is just given by this. Why that is the case is because, you remember the cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. It, therefore, it will mean this is half and this is half. Half plus half is equal to 1. Therefore, in that case, this... The average, the time average uh, values for the energy density is just given by this. The time uh, average of the pointing uh, vector or the energy flask is given by this. The time average of the momentum density is just given by, by this. You just put halves on, on, on all of these previous equations. So that is the time average of, of, of each individual uh, quantity. Now, experimentally, we usually measure the power per unit um, area which is nothing else but the density and the density is nothing else but it's just the pointing 
vector is the time average of the pointing vector which is just given by this now in that case this is what you are going to have now we must also talk about when the light falls on the perfect uh, absorber it delivers the momentum to the surface the radiation pressure and uh, the radiation pressure is nothing else but the force divided by area and then the force the pressure is nothing else but it's just the intensity divided by the by the c right now let me also talk about the electromagnetic wave in the linear isotropic and homogeneous material now in this case the total charge density the total charge density in linear material is the combination of the free charges and the bond charges and the bond charges from the previous chapters that we have done in your previous classes is uh, nothing else but the negative divergence of the polarization where the p is the uh, dipole moment density the polarization for an example when you when you you put the 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 say an insulator inside the region of the electric field you are just going to 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 polarize the material you are going to induce the you are going to separate the polarization is just a means the separation of these charges uh, positive and negative so that is the polarization the, therefore the polarization is the density of this dipole dipole moments that you are going to be developing when you put this under the influence of the the electric field so this is what you you should be knowing from your previous your previous classes right now that's that's your total charge density in terms of the the the, the insulator or the linear linear material now in magnetostatics the total charge or the total current density j has a free charge density a free current density and the bond charge density which is just given by the curl of m related to the magnetization and the third source of the current called the polarization current density which is the current density associated with the movement of flow of the bond charges is just given by jp now in that case if you consider a surface da inside the material as the material is polarized the bond charges move through this uh, surface is given by the p dot da and the corresponding current is just given by the rate of change in the polarization dot da now that would mean that the current, uh, the polarization current through the surface is uh, by definition given by J dot dA. So therefore, the JP is just given by the rate of change in the polarization. Right. Now, consider now the Maxwell equation, the first M M M Maxwell equation. Now, in that case, I just want to rearrange this equation and write it in terms of this. I'm taking the epsilon in the other side so that I can have the total charge uh, density. Now, that total charge density is nothing else but it's just given by that. So that is given by that. But now I also know what is the bond charge. The bond charge is negative divergence of, of, of the of the polarization and now in that case i am taking the divergence on one side and the i'm taking the uh, uh, this uh, pf on the other side this so uh, this is what i'm going to and i'm going to define this as the d d vector now if i define that as a d vector therefore the first maxwell equation in terms of the maxwell equation in the linear material is given by the divergence of d is just given by the uh, uh, row f where rho f is the uh, uh, the charge density of free charges right so now let us also consider the maxwell's uh, fourth equation uh, uh, why am i considering that because it's got j and then the j is got the the combination of the free charges and the uh, free bond charges as well as the polarization current uh, 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 density so now in that case i'm just going to write that in terms of that now i'm going to divide everything with e, e, epsilon naught I'm, uh, I'm dividing everything in epsilon naught and i'm taking that into the other side of the equation so this is what i'm going to have and this is just the total current density and the total current density is nothing else but is the combination of the free current density and the bond current density and then the polarization current density now given by that now this is just going to be given in terms of 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 this now this is just the curl of 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 this uh, m uh, plus the rate of of this from what we have uh, derived uh, above so in that case this is what i'm going to to have when i am taking the curls on one side so if i'm taking the curls on on one side i'm just going to have this i'm taking the curls on the one side and then i'm just going to have this right now using the definition of d and then if i define this as h this is what I'm going to have for the Maxwell's fourth equation that the curl of H is just given by the current density of free charges plus the rate of change in D, where D is just defined in terms of 
in terms of this. Now, as a result, the Maxwell's equations for 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 for, for linear material or Li uh, material is just given by by this equation. Right. Good. Now we only consider a linear material which also isotropic, having the same properties in all directions and homogeneous, having the same properties at all uh, positions and directions. Such a material is what we call the linear isotropic and homogeneous material. And then D is equal to, is given by epsilon E, and then H is just given by, by B divided by epsilon, epsilon. By 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 mu sorry, so now the Li material is uh, for an example. Say you have a piece of material like that. So now in that case, uh, what does that mean? It it means that the properties of this material here is exactly the same as the properties of this material here. It is linear and homogeneous and uh, isotropic in all direction. It's just it just it's just the same, right? Now. If the material contains no free charges or currents, if there are no free charges and currents, of course, the first Maxwell equation is just going to be zero. But now, here, the last Maxwell equation is just going to be mu epsilon. Note that epsilon naught has changed to epsilon and mu naught has changed to E because now we are talking about the permittivity of material because this is in material now, in linear material. Right. Good. Now you can also take the curl of this equation and the curl of that equation to actually check whether the speed of light is just, uh, the speed of this waves inside the, of electromagnetic wave inside the the linear material is just given by by this equation. And now we can also write this in terms of this uh, index of refraction. The, in terms of the index of refraction, the speed of 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 of, of light and the speed of this waves inside this material is just given by by that equation that what i'm trying to say is is the fact that the v is nothing else but the c over over n where n is the refractive index of of that that material because the light might be traveling from one medium to the other medium for an example it might be driving from air to water or from um, air to glass and and and, and so on Right. Now, yes, I mean, I've already uh, explained it. Now, for a plane wave in a material, the electric field is perpendicular to magnetic field and is perpendicular to the direction of motion. For an example, this is what I've just, I've just shown you. For an example, if the red region is the electric field and the blue region is the magnetic field, they are perpendicular to each other and they are also perpendicular to the, to the direction of, of, of motion. Right. Good. And of course, we can see that uh, the electric field and magnetic field will never be in the same direction, will never be in the same direction because the magnetic field is the propagation cross E, which is just going to be, if the B is in, 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 in X, the electric field will be in, in Y if the direction of propagation is in in Z. So that's what I also wanted you to see. Now the energy density is just given by this from the contribution from the magnetic field and then from the uh, contribution from the electric field is just given by that. Now the total energy density is just given by, by this. Now what I'm trying to say in all this equation is the fact that the epsilon naught is just changing to E and then mu naught is just changing to U as you can just see from the previous when comparing this to the previous equations right now as well as the pointing uh, vector or the energy flux density you see epsilon naught for in in vacuum so this in, in material you see now this is just that so everything is just the same but the fact that in terms of the c this is the velocity of these waves inside that material is no longer c so the c also tends to be to be to be to be the velocity and then the epsilon tends to be like in terms of the density which is the half average of of the pointing pointing vector now that let me also jump into the Fresnel's equation now Fresnel's equation describes the reflection of 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 uh, the reflection and refraction of light uh, uh, of electromagnetic waves at the interface between the two 
lee material having no free charges now in that case let the incident wave uh, be given in terms of in terms of of this uh, in terms of the electric field incident is just given by that and the, the corresponding magnetic field will just be given in terms of that now this is the interface if the interface is just given by by this now the interface it might be something like this now the waves are traveling into the interface but now i'm just putting it in this way the, therefore the interface is like this now this wave is actually traveling at a certain angle theta incident and then they will be refracted at the refracted angle and some of them will be will be transmitted at the certain uh, transmitted uh, uh, transmission uh, angle so this is my x so this is my this is my x so this is my this is my x axis and then this is my z axis Therefore, this is my y axis. I want you to always remember that so that you can be able to, to see what is going to happen. Right. Now, the incident wave results in the following. A transmitted wave, which is, that's why now you see here, you see the subscript I, and then the amplitude of the electric field. Now, here you see the transmitted wave with the corresponding magnetic field, and you are also going to have the reflected wave in terms of the electric field, this is a subscript r and then the magnetic field in the in terms of the uh, the corresponding magnetic field is just given by that this is very important because we know from the faraday's law e induces p and b induces e you cannot have one without the other uh, yes i mean this is what we have seen from the faraday's law now let the interface be the x y the interface be let the interface be the x y the x and y this is the interface. The wave is traveling into this interface. This is the wave traveling into this interface. This is X and this is Y. This is Y. Now, so that the normal is the Z direction. So the Z direction, so this is my Z direction. This X, Z is what we call the plane of, of, of incident. X x and z x and z is the plane of of incident while this is the interface x and y is the interface so good people i think that that makes it 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 very clear now the boundary condition at that surface is that the change in d is nothing else but it's just the the, the free surface charge uh, uh, density now the Change in E parallel is just equal to zero, and the change in B parallel is just equal to zero, and the change in H is just given by KF cross and the unit vector N. Now, I will explain this uh, parallel and then the, the perpendicular in, 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 in a while. All right. Now, for the Lie material with no free charges or currents, this means that the D and the, the D is equal to E and the E parallel and B and the H must always be continuous at the interface because there are no because there are no no free charges. All right, this results in the boundary condition at the X Y plane and the X Y plane at the interface at the X Y plane at the interface. It means that therefore that the this is the the E incident uh, parallel. Uh, I mean perpendicular plus the the electric field uh, reflected perpendicular is just equal to the E and then the E transmitted uh, perpendicular and all these other 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 boundary conditions. I I would suggest that you go a little bit back to actually look at this uh, uh, boundary condition. So now as a result, this is what you are going to have in terms of your in terms of your in terms of your boundary conditions now this boundary condition cannot be satisfied unless we first match the exponential part for an example you see now for 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 this to be equal to that the exponential part therefore must be the same so that we can say this is just uh, uh, the same now in that case this is what i'm mm, talking about now the incident wave is got this and then the transmitted wave has got this and the reflected wave is got this so now the exponential part uh, 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 must satisfy that now this must happen for x and y and t because this is a function of time uh, this wave is a function of, of of time the electric field and the magnetic field is a function of time it requires that the ki k 
incident in X and uh, transmitted uh, in, and they reflected in X must all be equal and this must also be be equal in Y. Don't ask me why there's no Z. There's no Z because there's no magnetic or electric field in Z. The Z is only the direction of the propagation and the frequencies must also be, be, be the same. Now since we chose Ki to lie in the z play to lie in the x into z x x z plane x z plane therefore there is no k i y and uh, therefore there is also no k t there's no k t therefore they are all equal to zero now in that case the final condition will be the the wave vector k i the incident must just be the same as the k transmitted it must also be the same of the wave vector of the uh, reflected uh, waves now based on the wave vectors of the incident and transmitters and the reflected makes an angle theta as shown in this diagram uh, respectively uh, with the normal then this requires that the ki sine theta must just be equal to this and they must also be equal to the the one for the reflected right now because the this a frequency or the omega i is just the same as the omega t is just the same as the omega r i can write that equation in terms of this because this is just the same as that it's just the same as that therefore i have done nothing with that equation now as a result and because of this relation this means that i can write this in terms of the refractive e index and that is nothing else but this is just the the snell's the snell's law right so that is just the snell's law but let us just talk about the this equation here the the n1 the the for an example if n1 sine theta incident is equals to n1 sine theta refracted this is what i wanted us to talk about right now because this one is the same as this one Therefore, theta incident must therefore be equal to the theta refracted. So that's that's what I wanted you to to see for this to be to be equal. For this to be equal to that, therefore that must be equal to that. Remember, the refracted waves are in medium one, and as as the incident waves, they are in medium one. In medium two, we only in and in medium two, we only in medium two, we only we only have the the transmitted waves. Good. I hope it is it is clear right now this is what i was just saying for this to be equal to this it means that the angle of reflection must be equal to the angle of of, of incident now we still require that the amplitude to satisfy the specific conditions uh, required by the electromagnetic group this leads to a fresnel's equations and i'm just going to be using the following definitions the beta is just given by that and the alpha is just given by by that now for the polarization in the plane of incident polarization in the plane of incident this is a plane of incident this is the plane of the uh, polarization of the plane uh, in the plane of incident so this it means that the electric field is actually in this direction of the plane of incident uh, remember this is my x and this is my z so this this i have my 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 interface like this so the electric field which tells us about the polarization is in the plane is in the direction of of the plane of incident i hope you are able to to make sense of that now e lies in the xz direction because i am sending the electric field in this direction is the in the plane of incident because this is the electric field but this is the interface this is the interface the interface is in x and y plane x z plane the electric field so that's that's what you you are which is perpendicular to the uh, a wave vector now the boundary condition number one the boundary condition number one is just given by this now just want to write it in terms of this now uh, this the e perpendicular the e perpendicular is just going to be given in terms of this for an example i just want to draw this so that you can understand why this is not a minus here I'm, i'll just do this and then you apply the same for for the rest let me just do this e perpendicular so that you can see and understand now i'm just going to draw this in in here this is my wave vector 
my wave vector is going in this direction right now the electric field i'm going to use is always perpendicular is always perpendicular this is the amplitude e not e not incident e not incident right it can be shown that this angle here is nothing else but is theta this angle there is nothing else but is just the theta incident theta incident right now from this diagram if i do this and then the interface my interface is actually parallel to that right that is my interface and this is my z direction right now i just want to write few things here and and this is something like if i take this this is nothing else but this is just going to be my e parallel and of course i'm going to have the other vector going in that direction and that vector here is e e perpendicular e perpendicular that is going to be e perpendicular to the to the interface as a result when i want to write the sign of of theta incident the sign of theta incident is e perpendicular divided by e the amplitude of e naught therefore this implies that the e perpendicular is nothing else but it's e naught it's e naught i the sign of theta incident but look at the direction of the of the e perpendicular therefore it must be minus there i hope you are able to see that so now you apply the same for the reflected and then you also apply the same for the uh, refracted but what i also want to to emphasize here is let us just talk about the the e parallel uh, uh, the the e parallel so that whenever sorry so so that whenever so that whenever i see that i'm going to 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 just write i'm just going to write so that you can see that the in terms of e parallel the cosine of theta i is nothing else but it's just e parallel divided by e not i so now you see that the e parallel of that is nothing else but is e not t because it is also pointing up it is pointing up in the positive direction the cosine of theta incident so i want to, you to keep that in 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 your head so that whenever i am doing the other one you can just see that the e parallel is just given by that so now in that case if you rearrange this equation this is what you are going to have and you can also by uh, according to the wave speed this can be written in terms of that now from there uh, from snell's law this is what i can write now the condition then becomes this now i want us to remember that i've defined this in terms of that therefore i can write this equation in terms of of this and this is nothing else but this is the first Snell's equation now the boundary no, this is uh, one equation that i'm going to have in terms of the transmitted and the 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 incident uh, not the first Snell. the first Snell is when i'm going to be using solving this equation simultaneously with the other one and then i will be def uh, deriving the first Snell's equation now the boundary condition for the e E, uh, the condition two for the e i parallel and the e r parallel is just given by this now in that case you shall agree with me that the i incident is the cause of i because the i parallel is that one which would be parallel to here and then parallel to that angle theta i just want to remind you again this is what you are going to have for for e parallel so this is what you are going to have for the e e parallel Yes. Right. Now, if you have that, therefore, and then you have this, you rearrange that equation and then you write that in terms of the definition above that. This, this is what you are going to have. The boundary condition three uh, gives no information since the magnetic field has no components in the perpendicular to the 
interface. Right, now the boundary condition 4 gives the same results as condition 1. As a result, we are not going to consider that. Now, solving this equation, the one that we have just derived, this one, and that one simultaneously gives us the Fresnel's equation given by, by this, this equation. Right, there is an intermediate angle called the theta b or called the Brewster angle at which the interface wave is completely extinguished uh, and this occurs at alpha is equals to beta. And that can also be defined in terms of the, the tangent of, 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 of an angle and it can also be defined in terms of the refractive indexes. Now, the polarization perpendicular to the uh, plane of incident. The plane of incident is this plane, the x, the, 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 the x, z. Now, if we are talking about the polarization perpendicular to the a plane of incident, it means that the electric fields are perpendicular to this plane, which means the electric field is actually moving in this plane of, of, of incident. The amplitude of the electric field, the amplitude is in this direction. Right. So that's what I, I, I want you to, to check the lecture notes for, for, for the derivation. But the first nerve equation is just given by this. You, you just apply the same th procedure that we have done and it's just going to be given that. Now the light intensity is given by this. The, as the time average of the pointing vector is given by this. And of course, these are just the velocity of these waves inside that uh, inside this uh, material along the propagation direction. Now the intensities the intensities are just given by this and then the the intensity of uh, the incident wave the intensity of transmitted wave is just given by the intensity of the refractive wave is just given by 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 that now let us also talk about the reflectivity the reflectivity is simply the ratio of the uh, reflected into the uh, incident intensity and is just given by this equation and then let us also talk about the transmittance which is a little bit more complicated but the ratio of the uh, transmitted the intensity of the transmitted to the incident intensity is just given by by this by this equation here which is a little bit more more complex now in terms of the polarization in the plane of incident because we know uh, uh, that the reflectivity is just going to be given by this equation and the transmittance will be transmittance will be just uh, given by by this equation now in terms of the Polarization perpendicular to the plane of incident. Po polarization to the plane of incident is just given by the reflectivity is just given by this equation, and then the transmittance is just given by by this equation. And of course, in both cases, note that the r plus t is just given as as one. Now, what is also important is the fact that the b is a constant for a given interface. For a given interface, is constant because b depends on the refractive of index, but the value of alpha varies with the angle of of incident. So let me also dive into the electromagnetic wave in, in, in conductors and uh, I will start with the Ohm's law. You remember from the Ohm's law the current density in the conductor is proportional to the electric field by given by this and the constant of proportionality is nothing else is what we call the the conductivity. What I'm trying to say is that the current density is proportional to the electric field but now if you want to have equal sign there if we have to have equal sign there therefore we have to put the conductivity now here sigma is actually the conductivity not the the surface charge i have to make that one clear this is the conductivity not the surface charge just the symbols are are the same now maxwell's equation for linear media with free charges and currents are, is just given by this this are maxwell's equation with the uh, free charges and 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 currents, right? So this is what you are going to to have for that. Now, conservation of charges gives us the continuity equation for free charges is just given by by this. Now, from this equation, we can apply the Ohm's law, and we, that will give us this. And then from this, because we know what is this, uh, this is. Uh, this equation there and then this is what you are going to have and then from there you can eventually be able to use the integration as well as the initial condition to show that the the, the free charges are just uh, given by that now in some other books that is just given by 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 the row of the total free charges free charges as a function of time is nothing else but it just equals to e sigma e minus sigma over epsilon and then here you've got t and then that must be multiplied by 
by by the initial initial free church initial free church which is nothing else but the initial free church yes so this is what you are going to see from from the the other books now this is nothing else but this is the characteristic time which is denoted by by the tau so that is denoted by the tau and what is very important is the fact that i want you to know that the the the, the characteristic time is very important because it tells us how good a conductor is for example for a perfect conductor the sigma or conductivity goes to infinity this sigma is conductivity not the surface is conductivity goes to infinity and the characteristic time is equal to zero but for the poor conductor the characteristic time is much greater than one over omega and for the good conductor the characteristic time is much less than one over omega now if we wait up until the free charges dissipate because the free charges depends on is a function of time it depends on time there would be a time where this there would be no free charges now then in fact we can be able to tell when will the free charges be the half of the initial uh, uh, charges so that can be calculated all right now now the, then if the free charges is equal to so the next order equation that the four become this one will just become zero and then in this equation this one other one will just stay the same and of course you can decouple this equation or you can take the curl of curl the curl of curl and the curl of curl of this so that you can see what will be the difference now with that i also want to dive into the last section of this uh, lecture notes which is or uh, lecture video which is nothing else but the wave guys uh, consider the waves uh, confined to the interior of a whole pipe or a wave kite now in that case the boundary conditions uh inside uh, if we assume that the waveguide is a perfect conductor so that the electric fields of a perfect conductor is equal to zero inside the the the, the conductor and the magnetic field is e equal to zero now therefore the boundary condition will just be given by by this by this by these equations all right where this sigma where this sigma now where this sigma is 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 the 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 surface charge now in this case this is what you are going to have for the uh, boundary condition number one uh, is just going to be zero and three because e and b is just equal to zero one and three are just going to be equal to zero because there's no electric field and magnetic field inside now we are interested in the monochromatic wave that propagates down to the tube uh, so that the electric field and b have the generic form this is the electric field the solution for the electric field and then the solution for the magnetic field right in that case in the interior of the waveguide where there are no free charges that's why the electric field is equal to zero and magnetic field is equal to zero therefore the maxwell's equations are just given by this by these equations right now this is one over c because i'm talking about the in the interior where there are free charges it's it's empty that's why it's c speed of light it's just like in vacuum right now let us also talk about from the maxwell's equation the curl of e now the curl of e is just given by this now the curl of e is actually the faraday's law and the curl of e and the curl of e is nothing else but it's just equals negative rate of changing b over that so the last part of this equation was supposed to be a negative rate of changing the magnetic uh, field so that's that's what you are going to have for for that now let us talk first with the i want to take it in, in, in uh, separately for, for from the each and every uh, direction for an example in in along k along k direction if we take the curl along the k direction along the k direction which means the magnetic field will be in in k in z so this part here this part here i'm putting it here now remember the right hand side is just nothing else but it's just the negative rate of b dt now if you do the negative rate of b dt you are just going to have minus omega t but multiply by that negative by but multiply by that negative so this is just going to be minus minus i omega so that's why you see this there 
So, but therefore, that will be multiplied by 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 the b in in the z direction. So, what I'm trying to stress here is the fact that if you take this, you are just going to have this, and then you are just going to have the magnetic field in 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 the b b field in in the z direction. So that's what you are going to have. Now, if you apply the same for, for the along I, along I, along I, this is the one that I'm talking about here. But what is very important here is the fact that you can differentiate with respect to Z. You can differentiate with respect to Z, the electric field with respect to Z. Now, if you do that, you are just going to have IK. IK, this minus, this minus is coming from this minus there. That's why I K I and then the side is just going to be the same. And then you apply the same for the for the for the for the J. For the J, you can differentiate for the J, you can differentiate this with respect to Z in X. With respect to Z. You are just going to have I K X because you have the little field in X. So now that's what you are going to have, and then this is what you are going to have. Now this is the case because of this as I have I have explained. As I have explain now similarly with the magnetic field with magnetic field because i'm talking about the maxwell equation number four and the maxwell equation number four is nothing else but it's just the curl it's just the curl of the magnetic field b which is nothing else but it's just one over c squared d e and dt so that's 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 the maxwell equation now in that case what are you going to have you are just going to have this uh, equations now if you come if you eliminate by from 3 and 4 this is what you are going to have and then if you eliminate bx from 2 and 6 this is what you are going to have and similarly you can eliminate bx and by from 2 and 6 this is what you are going to have now with that with that because we can see that if we know ez and bz therefore we can be able to tell what is the electric field in e, ex if you know EZ and BZ, you can be able to tell what is the magnitude of the uh, electric field in, 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 in Y. If you know BZ and EZ, we can be able to tell what is the BX. If you know BZ and B EZ, we can be able to know BY. Therefore, EZ and BY has, has, has everything. It, tell, it determines everything. We can actually be able to determine everything. Now, in setting... Equation one, two, and three. The red equation. This, this, this red equation is here. This one. To the because now here is just the curls, and this is the curl. We've derived this when we are considering the curls of E and the curl of B. Now, if we put these equations into the other Maxwell's equation, which is nothing else but the divergence of E is equal to zero and the divergence of B is equal to zero. What are we going to have? This is what we are going to have. I'm just writing this in, in red to always remind you that the electric field is in X and the magnetic field is, is, is in Y, is, is, is in blue, blue shaded from that uh, spectrum that I've shown you. Right, good, this is what you are going to have. Now, if EZ is equal to zero, we call them the, trans, the, the transverse electric field, but now if bz is equal to zero we call them the transverse magnetic waves and if both are equal to zero we call them the transverse electro electric ma electromagnetic electromagnetic waves so i would like to pause there and this is for your for your tutorials and goodbye